Welcome. Um, this was my first venture into uh, this format. This is Zooming format. So I'm sure I'll have a few glitches along the way. So, um, but it's great to see so many people that are interested in birding on this April 22nd. That is also Earth Day. So kind of fitting that we are uh, looking at birds, uh, at least virtually looking at birds, even if we can't really go outside, we can at least appreciate what we'll be able to do soon. Um, some of us, or some of you maybe, even are birding a little bit right now, because it is a great thing to do when we are social distancing. Um, one, you can do it mostly uh, right out your living room window, if you pay attention, um, or you can still go to some of the parks um, and take a stroll around. That's one of the things that we're allowed to do, uh, provided it's within the realms of so keeping six feet away from the other person. You know, we wear a mask when we go out. Um, that's recommended. Um, just, you know, kind of be by yourself. Uh, and that way it's nice and quiet and you can hear those birds and see them a little bit better. Um, there are not a lot of migrating birds at the moment. So if you do go out, don't get frustrated with the fact that you're not going to see a lot of little warblers flitting around in the trees. It's not quite time for them to come through yet. Um, but you will see some of our regulars around. Um, we, I am going to talk mostly today about feeder birds um, that are in our area. And I'm sure I won't touch on all of them that you might be seeing. And also it really depends on where you're located. It's habitat specific. For example, one of the ones that I don't have in my presentation that some of you may be starting to see are the Eastern bluebirds are coming back. However, we never see a bluebird where I live because we don't have the right kind of habitat. We do see a lot of woodpeckers because we have that kind of habitat. We have a lot of trees around us. Um, bluebirds don't like a lot of trees around. They like wide open spaces so they can zoom down from their nests um, and um, grab all those insects and things. So anyway, so just know that, that you, know, you might not see what I am going to show. And also, um, just so you know, um, I am not an expert at burning. I am a nature enthusiast. I love nature things. And I started getting into burning uh, a little bit more after Chuck and I retired. And it's just kind of grown from there. So he's my person that I drag around to all these burning activities. He's a great photographer though, so he takes a lot of pictures. And he says just by osmosis, he's beginning to be able to identify uh, some birds. I'm now going to put up on screen um, a PowerPoint presentation. And that is um, what I will be talking over. Um, let's see if we can make this work. Okay, coming backyard birds in the Alpena area. And the way I have it set up is I will show you um, some pictures, and then I'll give you a couple of seconds so in your mind you can kind of go, oh, I know that bird, that's a robin or whatever. Um, just to give you a couple of seconds to um, see if you can uh, identify it. These are two of the woodpeckers that you will likely see in the Alpena area. Notice the coloring on them is similar. Notice that the beaks are not. This one has a scrubby little beak as compared to this one that is longer. Okay, now you can see the one on the left is a downy woodpecker and the one on the right is a hairy woodpecker. How do you remember the difference between them? Which one's a hairy, which one's a downy? For one, that hairy is just a little bit bigger, hence it, this is my, how I remember them. Um, bigger means huge, starts with an H, and so does hairy. So the hairy woodpecker is a huger of the two. I know that's really not a word, but 
anyway, that's in my mind how I remember them. And the downy is slightly smaller and the beak is also smaller. Woodpeck, uh, that hatches. Okay, now, unfortunately, these are not to size. Maybe I'll have to see if I can fix that someday. Um, the one on, okay, I gave you a minute to think about it. This one is the red-breasted nuthatch and actually is the smaller of the two. It doesn't look that way on this photo. Um, I'll have to uh, size that a little different. Um, and this one is the white-breasted nuthatch. Okay. The white-breasted nuthatches, basically you will see also quite a bit during the winter. Uh, the red-breasted, not so much. Um, we see the red-breasted even during the winter, except during the very coldest time of year. Okay, moving along. And this is the red-bellied woodpecker. And you, if you're new to birding, you might say, no, it's not, that's a red-headed woodpecker. Well, yeah, kinda. Um, he does have a partially red head, but if you would see the underside of this bird up close, you would notice that it does indeed have a rosy tint to some of the feathers. Hence, it's called a red-bellied woodpecker. You just, I guess, have to remember it. <laughs> and of course, I bet you all know what these are. The male and female cardinal. Uh, they, of course, are around, ours stay around all year. We don't see them a lot in midsummer when they are nesting. But other than that, we have a lot of cedar trees around us that they really like. And so we do see them uh, all year. Uh, and of course, this is the black cap chickadee. And later, I'm going to show you, if I have time, I'm going to pop up a screen and show you some sounds that the chickadee makes. And you may all go, yeah, I know what the chickadee sounds like. Well, one of the sounds of the chickadee sounds very much like the Phoebe, the, the Eastern Phoebe that we also get around here in the summer. And though their sounds are easily mistaken for each other. Um, so that's kind of interesting. And this one, tough to tip mouse. And again, we have these here in our habitat around our home all year, but not everybody will. Oh, and this is a favorite or not. <laughs> a lot of people call these, these are one of what we call bully birds because they tend to push other birds out of the feeder um, if they really want to get it. Um, they love sunflower seeds obviously from this picture, but also the ones you put in your feeder. So if you do have a lot of blue, bird, blue jays and you don't want them chasing out all your other littler birds, you need to kind of be careful about what kind of uh, feeder you put the sunflower seeds in. And this one. Again, we get a lot of these all year round. Actually, we see more of these in our yard in the winter. The morning doves, okay. And this one we only see in the late spring and summer. Um, and you'll say, well, that's a winter picture. Well, it was just one of those late snowstorms. <laughs> so they were already here. Um, and it's a song sparrow. A uh, very melodious singer uh, when they're uh, nesting. And so the, they, you will sometimes just see them sitting maybe on a branch, just singing their little heart out. And this is one of the birds that are easy to confuse, all those sparrows. Uh, this one we see a lot, the American tree sparrow. And again, um, they are coming back right now. Um, so you might begin seeing those. Aha, you probably know what these are. And my American goldfinches are just now starting to get their bright yellow feathers. So that's always great to see. That's a wonderful sign of spring for me. The bird on the, oh, and by the way, these bright yellow ones are the uh, male goldfinches. The one on the right, is actually a goldfinch uh, that has lost its yellow color and it is 
it has molted into its winter foliage, into its winter feathers. <laughs> and they love uh, to pick seeds out of flowers. So these uh, dried up things that you see this one sitting on are actually cone flowers. So if you are a gardener, um, that's one of the flowers that a lot of birds like to eat the seeds from. Oh, uh, and this is a bird that's very easily confused with that bird. And this one is a house finch, and then this one is a purple finch. The purple finches hang out more with, we sometimes see one or two hanging out with our goldfinches. Um, the house finches, not so much. We, right where we live, rarely see a house finch. And this one, I thought later maybe wasn't a good choice to put in feeder birds because we here never see this bird at a feeder. He loves, he's on the ground here. He likes to eat ants and other bugs in the ground. That long beak allows him to kind of uh, peck in the ground and get all of those, especially ants and other crawly things. That's what they eat. But he's really a fun bird to watch if you happen to have him in your yard. He's called a Northern Flicker. Oh, and these guys will be coming back soon. Um, probably, I'd say around the, oh, I don't know, 8th to 11th of May, depending where you live. Um, so soon you'll be able to put your or oranges out. So you attract them. Um, and your feeders the Baltimore Orioles. And again, these are the male Baltimore Orioles. The females are not quite as colorful. Oh, and get your feeders ready. These special little birds will be here soon too, the ruby-throated hummingbirds. Um, and again, I hope to, um, I'll have time to bring up another site after we're out of here. And it's actually the hummingbird map that shows you the migration of them. So you can actually see uh, on this map where they are at any at, at right now. And you might not get this guy either, but um, a beautiful bird. Um, and again, this is the male, rose-breasted grosbeak. Um, the female is not nearly as colorful. She's drab and kind of speckled, a little bit speckled. Uh, yeah, but just the male is so beautiful and they sing so beautifully too. Um, they should be coming back uh, around the time that the Orioles, that the Orioles do. They love sunflower seeds. Okay, that's all of the specific birds I'm bringing up right now, but I do wanna show you some of the feeders that we have. Um, this is a favorite that I have out in the winter. Uh, well, actually, we leave it out all year, but in the winter, it at least gets is partially protected uh, from the snow and the ice. Um, and we put sunflower seeds in here, black oil sunflower seeds. Um, notice I have a baffle around the bottom of it because um, squirrels and raccoons also like it. And I also had figured out I had to take down this bird cafe sign because I couldn't figure out one summer what was eating such a horrendous amount of my sunflower seeds. And so we put out a night camera and I have a picture of a big old fat raccoon perched right up on the top of the speeder. So apparently what he was doing was he was big enough that if he stood on this sign, on this board, he could then arch his body up over on top of the baffle. <laughs> Just get up there. Yeah, they're tricky little creatures, all these creatures that try to eat your bird seed. In the back here, you can see this orange uh, feeder. That's one of my uh, Oreo feeders. However, Oreo fe Orioles and hummingbirds share, share and share alike. You'll even see a, an Oreo try to scrunch himself up and eat from a hummingbird feeder, even though the perches aren't nearly as big, but they'll try to do it. 
Um, this feeder, the, and you'll notice this uh, hummingbird feeder in my hanging suet feeder here, that's the yellow one. And this one over here that you can't see very well because it's, it's uh, in front of some trees here, uh, that's a suet feeder. It's just got a cake suet in it. But it, if you can see this, and you probably, I don't know if you can, there is a wire running from over here off to the right of this photo, all uh, behind that green feeder and over to this birch tree. And that's what we hang some of our feeders on. Um, now if you, <laughs> and again, some of your squirrels will try to jump down from the branches that are up above and land on whichever feeder they're trying to get at the moment. Um, it's also really, especially if you do not live where there's water nearby, to have some kind of a water um, uh, feature for birds to drink from and bathe in. I sometimes think they just laugh at me because they can just go, you know, 50 feet down to the lake here and splash and get drinks all they want. However, a lot of birds, that big a body of water is uh, kind of like me. They, they don't like to go in that big a bottle, body of water. Um, so they really do then prefer the bird, the bird bath. Um, this thing in the front here is just a flat feeder. It's a little bit concave, but it's just got black oil sunflower seeds in it. Um, this purplish thing, and I'll just mention it because you might wonder what it is. It's just a decorative object for my, my flower garden. Okay, and then on the right side, the picture on the right bottom, I just wanted to again say this is a feeder that we've got hanging from two wire from a wire from between two trees and it's actually you can see it really good out our bedroom window um, and so I make the most of it the wooden part has screen underneath it and just like window screen Chuck made it for us um, and we put black oil sunflower seeds in it um, this is a suet feeder kind of up above and then down below hanging from one side I have a sock thistle feeder so those are some of the ways that we feed the birds. And one that you can't see because it's off on a different area is we do put out real suet, like not just the suet cakes that you can buy in the store, but suet that you have to buy from a butcher shop. You know, Purchase carries it, um, I, uh, Neiman's did, you know, I'm sure you can get it lots of places. But um, yeah, you just ask for, I ask for bird suet and I buy it by the bag and then I chop it up into smaller pieces and put it in my freezer. So that concludes that part of this presentation. Um, if you want to email me and ask questions, it's tetsoftk at gmail.com. All of this information is in a handout that I'm going to give you um, that will be, um, I'm part of the email attachments that Dick said that he'll send out, or I can also send it out to you. Also in that um, document that we're sending out will be some of my special websites. Before I get into that though, this would be a good place. And by the way, on these, in case I forget to say it in a minute, um, on these websites, don't don't try to write them down or or take a lot of notes on it because I will. That is in the handout, so you, you'll be able to get it later. Um, Dick and Ron, do you have questions? This might be a good time to do that. Well, why don't we just let anyone who uh, wants to ask a question to unmute their microphone and just go ahead? Okay. Anybody got a question? You must not have I don't a have a question. Okay. I don't have a question, but I have a comment. Uh, okay. You showed a picture of, of the northern flicker, and I'm so glad yes. you did because I had that bird in my backyard. I keep thinking it's a woodpecker, but no, they would not be on the ground. And I always wondered what the name was. So thank you well, very much. You're welcome. Karen? Yes. Um, I wonder, do you make your own hummingbird nectar? I do. Um, the, um, the formula or the recipe for doing that is four to one. So it's four parts water to one part sugar. So um, 
you know, one, one cup of sugar then to four cups of water. Okay. And don't put any coloring in it. And I just literally stir it up really good. And I fill my feeder in what um, I don't use. I just put in the refrigerator for tomorrow. You know, it's good, it keeps fine in the, in the refrigerator. Um, so you don't have to boil it? No, that's how, thank you. I, I knew there was something else I wanted to say. Uh, a few years ago, um, people used to think that you had to boil it. And mm -hmm. most birders now are saying that that's not necessary. That's just a step that, you know, you just don't have to do. You know, as long sure. as you keep that, um, the extra, just keep it cool in a refrigerator. And then change your feeders. Um, clean out your hummingbird feeders as well as Oreo feeders. Uh, every so often because they do get kind of um they get kind of moldy looking or just dirty looking you know that and if you have if you don't have a lot of birds coming and eating it it almost gets kind of um foggy looking you know oh. cloudy looking so yeah. just be sure that you clean the feeders too okay great thank you mm -hmm. you're welcome anybody else Karen, this yes. is Linda Purser. I'm I'm in Ohio right now, not in Alpena. But I uh, just thought I'd share with you. We have our our bluebirds are here and they are nesting, and we have a lot of bluebirds in my neighborhood. Everyone has a bluebird house on the back of their mailbox, so um, oh. we see quite <laughs> How a fun. few. <laughs> oh, that's great! Yeah, yeah. Do you live anywhere near where they have that big birding uh, festival in Ohio around, I don't know, Maumee or something down there? Some year yeah. I'm, okay. Well, not too far. Maumee is about, um, Maumee's near Toledo. Yes. And we're near Cleveland. So we're okay. a little further okay. away. Sure, sure. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Okay, I am going to then share again a different screen because I'll show you a few websites um, that I think you would, um, it, they're just fun to look at. Let's see here if I can do this now. <laughs> so this one? <laughs> I think so. Let's see. See what comes up when I do this. Okay, okay. This is okay. This is the Thunder Bay Audubon uh, website, um, and you'll notice that there's a lot of uh, tabs going across here. Um, so our event schedule. There's some local birding hotspots listed. A few pic photos. Some of our birding counts, like the Christmas bird count, and so on and so forth. Um, and you'll notice that unfortunately here in our, right in the middle, it says all oh, TBAS events have been put on pause until the coronavirus emergency abates. Otherwise, right in this uh, little block in the middle here, I would have written what's coming up next. So, but anyway, that's something that you can peruse at your own uh, leisure. Next, I wanna show you the uh, Michigan Audubon site. And again, uh, going across, you know, they have lots of um, activities here. Um, shows how to get involved, bird-friendly communities, lots of information here. Um, news and events, learn. Now, if you, down here, they have, uh, this Jack Pine Warbler is the, the Michigan Audubon's quarterly magazine. That's a, a great read, you know, if you're, you know, uh, and again, they have some of their, um, again, their their activities listed there. But again, most of this is put on hold. One thing for those of you that are photographers, they have a really neat, right here, this one with this loon, they have a really cool uh, photography, um, uh, what do I want to say? Um, <laughs> where you take a photo and you send it in and see if they like it well enough to publish it. So, <laughs> contest, that's what the word I want. Okay, another site I want you to look at is Project Feeder Watch. 
Um, this has, if you would want to find out a lot of information about birds, on this tab, well, I want to go down to, um, let's see, it says common feeder birds, interactive. It's loading some of my resources right now. I'm going to bird, here we go. Here's a bird list. <laughs> now this, they only have the winter birds up, but that's what most of us feed the most anyway. So for example, um, one of the ones that I had out there was, um, let's just click on the cedar wax. I didn't have the cedar wax wing out there. It was really a pretty bird. Um, Notice then on the left, it tells you what kind of food that the, the cedar waxwing eats and also what type of feeder they like uh, because not all birds will come to all feeders. For example, the uh, cardinals will not come to any of the tube feeders. They will eat from the flat feeders on the ground that kind of thing. And of course, obviously, if you're seeing any of these birds, you can see that they're more than just Michigan. But nonetheless, um, a lot of them, you know, are just, a, there's just a ton of them. Here's some more information on the downy woodpecker. Um, there he is, you know, and again, it gives the food and the feeder types um, that they'll come to. So uh, uh, a neat uh, uh, resource for you. The next one I want to show you is called, um, it's from Cornell University. They do a ton of wonderful things with birding and at getting the um, information out there. Um, okay, I want to put black cat chickadee in here. And I'm going to have it come up. And again, you could do this with any bird. Uh, here's the chickadee. Notice that there is a button right here that says, listen. Okay, this is what I, I said, remember I, that's the sound that you and I are probably most familiar with. As I scroll down, You'll see that they also have the habitat where it lives, what it eats, how it nests, and so on and so forth. It gives some cool facts on it. Okay, okay. Okay, now I should get to the point where it gives me and uh, yeah, here we go. Okay, now here are some of the, come on. <laughs> okay, that's the one we know. That's another sound that chickadees make, which you might be familiar with. That one I don't, you don't hear maybe quite as much. Okay, this is not the site that's giving me the sound that I wanted to hear to hear. But nonetheless, it, you get the idea that all of those different sounds uh, habitat, what they eat, are all listed. Oh, and here's the fun one I wanted to show you. Oh, I think they're all fun. But especially right now at this time of year, uh, because we're all kind of just can't wait for those hummingbirds and things to get here. Um, there is actually this map. And the bright, or the dark red ones, depending on what it looks like on your screen, are the ruby-throated hummingbirds. Those are the ones that we see here in Michigan. So if you click anywhere on this map, something will pop up. Like I just happened to click on where it says, it said Tennessee. Um, come on, where is it? There is a spot you can actually type in like Michigan. Hmm. 
<laughs> well, and of course, oh, yeah. Well, I'm sorry. I'm just not able to spot right away where I can type in Michigan. But there is a place you can do that. <laughs> um, sorry about that. But anyway, it's really fun. And if I could figure out how to expand this. There. They're seeing uh, Orioles, ruby throated Orioles in Cedar Springs, Michigan. That was on the 21st. So... If they're in Cedar Springs, which is by Grand Rapids, by the way. Um, yeah, so they're coming. So um, I usually put my hummingbird feeders out and my Oreo feeders out um, around the 5th of May. Um, unless it's been a real cold winter, but, you know, it hasn't been real cold this year. So I, I'm thinking that that might, be, um, that might be a good time to do it. So... Um, those are, oh, there's also one other thing I'm going to get out of my share thing and just chat with you a minute, one, a couple more minutes. Um, in the resources that I will send you, and so you don't have to write this down, but there are a couple of really cool apps um, that you might want to investigate. Now, I'm on a laptop, so it doesn't work for me to get these apps on here, um, but if you, and again, remember, I, one of the places we went to was at Cornell Lab. Um, they have an app called Merlin Bird, M-E-R-L-I-N, and it's one of the resources I'll send you. So go to the app store and look up Merlin Bird, and it just will walk you through. Well, you can look up, like if you see a bird, you're outside with your phone, and you see a bird, and you think, oh, gosh, I think that's odd. Uh, an American tree swallow. So you can type, start typing in tree swallow and you know, it'll pop up and you can say, yep. And it'll pop up and you can say, oh, well, I guess it wasn't a tree swallow. You know, so then you can just put in swallow instead of tree swallow. And then it'll pop up, you know, 10 different swallows. And you can kind of look at the pictures and say which one it is. So it's also a find feature. Like if you knew that a bird had yellow on it, it had black on it and it had white on it. it. Usually gives you a choice of three colors. And then it might ask you where you saw it. Did you see it in a swamp? Did you see it in a tree? Did you see it uh, soaring? And you answer just a few brief questions and then it'll pop up with a list of possibilities. So that's kind of a fun app to have. Another one that's very much like it is called the Audubon Bird Guide. Uh, same type of app, but it's arranged a little bit different. I actually kind of like the Audubon bird guide um, a little bit better. It's personal preference. Um, these don't cost anything. So when you go to the app store, um, you, you just get the free one. You know, you don't have to get the, oh, and the third one I wanted to talk about was eBird. Uh, and again, all of these have, uh, I'm sure you, be they would be happy to take your money um but just get the free version to start out with that's all i have yet is the free version of the apps and it's it's fine it's great so anyway i hope that um those will give you some fun things to um kind of investigate uh anybody have any other questions now that i'm at the end of my information i'm going to share with you today i do kieran I have a question. Oh. yes this is Dixie. Um, hi. hi. We live in the middle of the woods and with a log home with lots of glass windows and the birds hit our windows. Yeah. So I actually stopped feeding them several years mm. ago. Um, any recommendations or just... Yeah, there, there are some places that have like a covering you can put over your windows, you know, that... What happens is they see a reflection in it. So they think, you know, they're seeing the reflection of your woods, for example, and they think it is the woods. So they bam into it. So anything you can put on your window, even if it's um, like uh, aluminum foil that you cut into strips, 
or wider ribbon that you hang down for a while. Um, we have put some, we have one window that they seem to hit at our house more. Uh, and again, we've put um, just some of those stickers that you can buy, you know, that are kind of decorative stickers, you know, just strategically place them to kind of break up um, that, that reflection. But yeah, yeah. And the closer the feeders are to the windows, I think the more apt they are to, you know, fly into it. Yeah, that's, that's always a sad part. Yeah. And the hummingbirds, the hummingbird feed, it almost like they get drunk on it. Do you, I mean, does the hummingbird, does the nectar get fermented? <laughs> it will. That's remember I mentioned that you should clean out your feeders uh, mm -hmm. often. And that's one of the reasons why. Um, is that if it's out there too long or even maybe three days when it's, you know, 90 yeah. degrees, you know, then, then it will. Yeah. And you should clean it out for that reason too. Thank you for mentioning that. I, I didn't, didn't remember to mention that you can also make them kind of drunk, but also keep that, um, that four to one ratio too. That's important. Some of the purchased, um, uh, liquids that you can buy in the stores have a higher sweetener uh, level and that also can be detrimental to them for that very reason. You know, it's like us, we get a sugar high, you know, <laughs> we eat too much of it and then we crash. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Anyone else? I had a question about whether you have a recommendation for an app for bird songs. Um, any of those that I mentioned, the two, the Merlin Bird and the Autobahn Guide, I think they have, I think you can click on a button and get the bird song. I'm pretty sure you can. So try those, I guess. But that also brings up a good point, um, and one that's part of what we call, um, um, birding, I don't know, safety tips or uh, things you should be aware of. Um, now that, you know, phones are so easy to go anywhere with, and you think you might want to see if you can call in, um, oh, say, a uh, uh, tufted tip mouse. Um, you can find it on your phone and you can hit play, you know, on one of those apps and it will play their, their call. And so you, then you may see some of whatever bird you're looking for come closer because it's trying to figure out where their fellow bird is. Um, either because they want to chase it away because they're territorial or they're just curious. Um, mm -hmm especially during the nesting season, that's not a good thing to do because it does take them out of their natural environment um, and, and will stress them out. So we have to be careful that we don't overuse that audio playback sound when we're actually in the field, you know, trying to identify birds. I mean, I, I get it that you want to know if that was a sound, but you can put it close to your ear. I'm talking about the one where you put it on loudspeaker and you, you know, hold it out there to see if you can make them come in. So another uh, safety tip. Thank you. Yes. Hello. Uh, you didn't mention that the chickadee says, hi, sweetie. Hi, sweetie. Oh, hi, yeah. Sweetie. Yeah. There, uh, there are a number of mnemonics like that, that you can use to kind of help you uh, identify, um, what a bird sounds like. Um, and you're right. Thank you for mentioning that. A lot of them are. There's actually, yeah, that, uh, that could be another presentation, I guess. <laughs> Anyone else? Um, the types, of, yes, can you share the types of um, bird feed? I mean, do you have any preference of seed oh. mixes or types of seed that sure. you put out in your yard for certain birds? Sure. Um, we always have out black oil sunflower seeds, the kind in the shell. Um, we don't, we don't haul it for them. They have to do that work. 
Um, so we buy the kind that are that have the shells on them, the black oil sunflower seeds. Um, we also have out um, safflower seeds in a different feeder. That's um, they're the little white uh, seeds that you see. Um, cardinals love them. Some of your little birds, chickadees, uh, tufted to titmice. Um, but those bully birds, not so much. So you rarely see like a grackle or a starling or even a blue jay just don't care for those seeds. So we try to have some of those out so that, you know, they have somewhere to eat without being disturbed by the bully birds. We also put out thistle seed. That's, we put in those long tubes of the sock feeder. Um, and again, those are not, um, your woodpeckers won't eat those. Those are for the little birds, the, the, canary, the goldfinches, uh, the chickadees, I think the tufted titmice come to those. Um, and then suet. We put out some cake suet that I purchase, and then um, the purchase, like butcher suet. Um, and then, of course, seasonally, we put out the hummingbird and the um, Oreo feeders. We don't put out mixed seed um, you, because, right. like the cracked corn, anything with the cracked corn in, because the squirrels love it, um, and the grackles and the blue jays and all of those other birds that I don't necessarily want to feed. I mean, yeah, we do by, you know, just because, <laughs> but I don't want to put something out there that they love. And the, a lot of the other birds don't particularly care for it. The ones that I, I want to call them my feeders. Okay. Anyone else? Has anyone else found a uh, bird food that really works in your area? Some kind of seed that you use that I didn't mention? Okay. Okay. Well, thank you for all being very patient. We've been, some of us have been online now for an hour because if you logged in early so you could get, um, be sure you were connected, you've been sitting here patiently and, and uh, connected for an hour. So thank you very much for joining in and it's been enjoyable. Hope you enjoyed it too. Happy birding. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, th thank you very much, Karen. Uh, just uh, we can leave the a couple comments. One is again, if you want to receive the email with uh, Karen's uh, links in it, please send us uh, a request at uh, all at alpinacc.edu. Uh, and if you want to be on our uh, listing, receive our listing of weekly programs, uh, we'll add that to you also. Uh, additionally, uh, you know, this is just an offer that if in the future you would like to share your photos uh you know in a meeting like this of different birds you've seen around uh we could arrange for that to happen too and train you how to do photo sharing which is not that difficult so uh from us at all we appreciate uh, karen's uh uh taking the time to put this presentation together for all of us who are sequestered now thank you thank any you. other questions hi thank you it was great you're welcome. Thank you, Karen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much from Ohio. Thanks, Karen. <laughs> bye. Enjoyed it. Thank you. you. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you from me too. Bye. Anyone else? Okay, thanks, Dick. Okay. I'll catch up with you later. Yep, we will uh, end the meeting. <laughs>